he is a New Jerseyan, uh, he's a native son. And I think he, f he is photographing his home state. These are places that are resonant with history for him. George Tice was the first living photographer to have a show at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. It was 1972, and the photographs were from his book, Patterson. I wanted to do a book about a, a New Jersey city. And I considered Newark, where I was born. I considered Hoboken. And then I discovered Patterson. An acquaintance suggested to me that I should go see the rock formations on Garrett Mountain. And while photographing the rock formations, I kept looking down on the city. And it just occurred to me that, you know, everything I wanted to do was right there in one view. Because you, from the mountain, you can see the whole city. Maybe you have to turn your head a bit. And, uh, so it just evolved that way, from the mountain to the city, and, and the, the mountain and the natural areas, and the falls became uh, one segment of it, and then the city itself. In the city, uh, houses go up, and the houses come down, and factories are built, and factories are torn down. People are born and live out their lives and die. And the mountain, the mountain is, is the enduring thing. I think the Passaic River is symbolic of the whole city of Patterson. The falls are, are still beautiful, yet the water is the most highly polluted water in the country. I think the quality of life is the same as the quality of water. It's deteriorated. If it didn't have the falls, I don't think it would have been as tempting. You know, but the falls today look pretty much the way Washington and Hamilton and Lafayette viewed them wow. 200 years ago. Or more. I'm looking to take a great picture. And I think Patterson has such potential. Uh, this is why when, even after four years when I did the first book, and finished it in 71, published it in 72, I always felt there was a lot more I could have done here and that maybe I gave this up prematurely and thought, well, maybe someday I'll come back to it and do a sequel. But also I wanted to see, you know, what happens a generation later. The cars change, people drive SUVs, different ethnic groups move in, things get torn down, built up, but uh, Patterson has not uh, was not revitalized like many, many old cities have been. And so I, I, I liked how it was still intact as I remember it for the most part. I mean, I, I have to admit I like old things. Patterson too was published in 2006, and the photographs were shown at the Newark Museum. The exhibit then traveled to William Patterson University Galleries, right next to Patterson itself. There's very warm feelings toward the city of Patterson. Maybe it's partly its history. You know, Alexander Hamilton set up SUM, which was the Society for the um, Establishment of Useful Manufacture. And they felt that Patterson was the perfect site for that because the water from the, both the falls and the river could move, had the power to move the industrial machinery. It's considered by many to be the cradle of the American Industrial Revolution. There's a photograph of the Alexander Hamilton Hotel and one of our visitors said that she spent the first night of her wedding in that hotel before leaving for Niagara Falls. I thought that was a sweet story. I think it's now used as a residence hotel. 
He's very aware of the city's history, he's very aware of its economic situation, he's very aware of the things that have happened to it. So I think the pictures really have all of that, they're, they're steeped in that awareness and that consciousness and he brings that to, to the process of, of documenting the city as it evolves in its, in its own slow way. When you work with the kind of equipment that George chooses to work with, large format camera, something you're going to set on a tripod, sheet film rather than roll film, careful single exposures, you're going to make your exposures carefully. George chose a, a version of the medium to work in that is a slow meditative process. The 8 by 10 inch negative will give you the detail and clarity that I want. It's the ultimate photographic instrument. People will look at me on the street. I'll be set up to photograph that uh, Zumac tree growing out of the stones in the bridge, and somebody can come, you know, what? They'll just shrug their shoulders. Why? Why? They're, they're not seeing what I'm seeing. And that, that's often the case. And sometimes uh, I'll let them look under the dark cloth and then they'll be amazed. Oh, you know, once you've, you know, here's, here's the world and then you, you take this piece and you frame it. And, there's a theatrical sense to many of the pictures. You're sort of, they're like stage sets, you know, sort of waiting for someone to, to appear. The human presence is very much there. And I order a cup of coffee, and I put a dollar down on the counter, and there's my nickel change. So I composed this. He said, are you getting me in the picture? I said, no. <laughs> because I didn't want him to too stiffly pose, but uh, you can read the whole menu, you can order from you can order your lunch from the from the photograph. And then I come back and I give them a print and he was surprised. He wants you to use your eyes, he wants you to look more closely. That's really what photography is about, is teaching us to see. Teaching us to see what is in front of our eyes to see it clearly and, and to see how astonishing it is when, when, and, and, how, and how, how rich and informative it is when you really look at it closely. You know, I want to build up all these single pictures so that I have enough that, that would be book length and, and tell the story.